Guys, what is going on? It is your favorite Northern Virginia, DC area real estate agent. And it looks like according to Zillow, the housing market isn't gonna be as bad as everyone thought it was gonna be. So I wanna take a look and see what their prediction is and then kind of talk to you a little bit about the state of our market here in the Washington DC area and go through some of the stats. But as always, please subscribe to this channel. And if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, text me at the number below. I love working with my YouTube viewers. Most of my business comes from this beautiful, amazing, informative, probably the best YouTube channel um, around here in Northern Virginia. I don't know. I'm just kidding. But anyways, let's get right into it. So what did Zillow say about the housing market? And this latest article that their economists came out with, they say Zillow forecast that home values will actually grow 3.9% in 2023. And that a significant increase from last month's increase. So last month, I think they thought maybe it was going to go down a little bit or maybe we were going to be even and now Zillow expects 4.36 million existing home sales in 2023 which could mark a 13 percent decline from 2022. They go on to say some of the areas around the country are doing a lot better than others as we know some markets are down 15 to 20 percent which isn't our market and then some areas are actually up. A lot of those areas are going to be out in the Midwest but they have significantly changed their projections. Why are they doing this? Because because at this point, it doesn't look like the Fed is going to be raising interest rates anymore. The stock market has pretty much predicted that they are done raising the interest rates, but I think we're gonna be stuck around the six to 6.5 to 7% rate that we are in right now. So what exactly does that mean for our local market? What I am actually seeing here as an agent who actively sells every day and is on the ground here in our market is there is still not much for sale at all. There are still buyers but there is some buyer fatigue because people are getting outbid on some houses and the rates did, you know, obviously come up from three that they were two years ago to now up to six to seven percent. But obviously I see most buyers are getting used to it. A lot of the lenders have done different programs to help buyers with their payment and all that. So in our local market here, things are still pretty steady, but I want to talk to you about the actual stats from last month and the month of April in our local market. All right, so let's talk about our local market here in Virginia and Washington, D.C. And let's see where we are active listing wise. The one thing you want to see with this is that's how many houses are actually on the market for sale. And some of these areas are really low. And I did include some outlying areas like Winchester, Culpeper and things like that in Front Royal because some of you had asked me to include these outlying areas. So I definitely will do that for you. But inventory is super tight, like I said, in most of the region around here. So Warren County, that's going to be Linden and Front Royal only averaged 83 houses on the market which is well below their last five to 10 year average for the month of April of 122 homes for sale on the market. Fairfax only has 882 homes for sale on the average for the month of April, which is super low. Arlington 275 and Frederick County where Winchester is, Stephen City, only around 192 homes on average. Loudon 434, Fauquier County 123. Stafford 213 and Prince William County with 365 and then the city of Alexandria with 154. So each of these areas in Virginia are at their five year low. So even when we saw all that activity before and after COVID, all of our area is at a five year low. The one outlier though is Washington DC, which had 700, one, excuse me, 1,762 active listings which is a five year high, which their average is around 1500. So inside the city of DC, sales are really slowing down compared to Virginia. All right, so let's talk about year over year pending sales, the difference of houses that have sold, you know, year over year from last April to this April, and they are down big time throughout the region, which shows kind of like, if, I, if there was a ton of inventory, then I would be really concerned. But right now we're still really in a seller's market. I mean, listen to this year over year sales, Warren County that saw its pendings down 33%. Uh, Fairfax is down 29%. Arlington is down 21%. Frederick County down 34%. Alexandria City down 31%. Washington, D.C. down 21%. Prince William County is down 30%. Stafford County down 22%. Loudoun down 32%. 
and Falkir down 29%. That's a lot of information to get all at once. So let's talk about that. So the sales are actually down almost a quarter to a third for every area part in the DC area, right? So there is just not a lot of sellers, but we're not seeing, like I've said before, a lot of move up buyers, meaning someone that was in a condo wants to buy the townhouse and then the townhouse people want to buy the new home. Uh, one thing I will tell you that you probably have noticed is I'm noticing some of the builders are starting to struggle a little bit. They're giving away a ton of incentives, $20,000 dollars in closing costs if you use their lender and different lot premiums are going away because they obviously have been charging a top top tier price and they just aren't commanding that like some of these resales but I will tell you some of the people that I see are moving are people that have to move maybe they got a government job or divorce situation things like that getting into some other areas let's talk about the medium sold price which is a little shocking I did expect it to be kind of flat some areas of our market are down a little bit so let's talk about that right like Washington DC is down 3.2 so obviously DC is struggling a little bit. So down 3% is pretty significant and they probably have an average sales price of six to 700,000. Prince William County is down 1%, Stafford's down 2%. Loudon, which shocked me, is down 2.7%. Now that makes sense. I have a lot of buyers who are from out of town that look at Loudon County and Loudon's average sales price is way up there. We also got some huge multi-million dollar properties over in Creighton Farms. And obviously when the market slows down, a lot of the luxury and high-end homes are gonna take a lot longer to sell. And then Falkir did have a significant drop around 8%. To me though, that's not like a screaming like your average five to $600,000 house dropped eight percent. Falk here has some multi-million dollar farms. So, but throughout the region, most of the prices have come down. So if you were waiting for a huge drop and you thought you were going to get a deal, that just isn't going to happen. But we take that, what Zillow is saying makes total sense because we're now we're seeing that the interest rates are not going up anymore as Zillow predicted. So now Zillow is predicting the market's going to stabilize a little bit and prices will probably go up about two to three percent. So around here, we have had a somewhat of a correction, but it's only been around like one or two percent. But some areas did have a little bit of an increase. Alexandria was just under 1%, Fairfax 0.7 of a percent, and Arlington around 6% of an increase. So Arlington sales prices year over year went up 6%, but then Frederick County where Winchester, Stephen City, all that is, their prices are up 10%. So shockingly, some areas are still up 10% in the Northern Virginia and outlying areas. What that means to me though, honestly, is some of these areas might have had a new construction boom or things like that, especially when you got out to Winchester, which is a little bit cheaper sales price and maybe like Prince William, Loudoun County and all that. But we've talked about this before. I think Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia is still heavily insulated from the rest of the market. Now, bearing the government does not figure out this debt crisis, which I'm sure they will, because if not, we're all going to be living on the street anyways. I think we're going to be OK here. I thought, to be honest with you, we would have maybe a five to 10 percent correction, but we just have not had that. And think about it. The interest rates went up all the way from two and a half percent, close to seven percent within the last two or three three years, I just had somebody close there at 6%, which to me, honestly, is not a bad rate. On the ground, though, we only have about a one-month inventory in all of Northern Virginia. What does that mean? If no houses came on the market, it would take one month for all those houses to go away. You are in a buyer's market when you're talking four to six months, so we actually are still in a pretty strong seller's market. If you want to sell, a big question I get asked is, well, Chris, there's not much for sale. One one thing you can do is you can actually do what's called a rent back. So like we put your house on the market for sale and then you're able to go to closing, you get your money, you rent the house back for a couple months from the buyer and then that able gives us time to help you find another house. Honestly, about half my deals right now are going through that process and a lot of buyers are giving free rent back still right now, but we aren't seeing the people waiving home inspections or septic tests if you have a septic system. We're not just seeing that at the moment, but other than that, that is a key way if you're a seller that you can move up. But honestly, folks, I think the market Zillow is about right for our market. I don't see a big significant change around here. So let me know in the comments below what you guys are thinking. But I've seen some buyer fatigue. I will say some buyers have gotten frustrated. If you're thinking about buying, don't get frustrated. Work with an agent like me who knows the market really well, knows how to get you your offer accepted. I honestly, and I'll tell you my good advice, whether I think it's a good deal or if you should pass or if you should write that offer. We just had a client that came from YouTube and Instagram that went 50,000 over. And guess what? but they didn't get it. And obviously, you know what I told them? Don't worry about it. Something else will come on. We'll find you your dream home. So don't get frustrated. As always, subscribe. I'll see you at the top or from the top.